Let's park it. Are you turned on? Why the hell are you riding dirt bike at 71? Because it's the funnest thing I've ever done in my whole life. That's kind of scary fast. I think it's a bargain. I love her on. This is my favorite. No, there's nothing spooky about this at all. Robbie, you got her all tuned up, huh? <laughs> Can you believe it? Where I'm you still been? here, 17 years <laughs> in the making. You're fat. I could go race vet. Kids are tough, dude. <laughs> Factory beta, and this man gets his hands dirty, dude. Oh, wait, he is wait, this guy. Nice. Good morning. It's a windy day at Glen Helen Raceway, and in front of me we have Mr. Ron Lawson. Ron, what are we doing today? We're gonna ride a Stark Varg. I got the uh, I got Justin Melrose coming up. He'll be here any minute now. We're gonna have to wait till he shows up because the gate's shut right now. Uh, Ron's probably tested more motorcycles than the majority of the high torque staff, even. Uh, on the MXA side. Um, so he's tested the old two strokes when we switched to four strokes and now there's this kind of push for uh, electric bikes. Since this gonna be the first day that you ride an electric bike um, in your testing? Uh, I've ridden electric bikes before. This is gonna be the first time for the Stark, which is gonna be really cool because, but well, it's not really true. We had it in our photo studio two days ago and I, I, I rode it up and down the street and uh, it was really fast. Well, what about the hills at Glen Helen and, and uh, just the terrain we have in California? Any uh, expectations? Well, that's the problem because in the past, you know, the Alta was the only bike that we really had, electric bike that we had much experience with here. And in truth, with the hills at Glen Helen, it couldn't do a full moto. You know, it was good for about 10 minutes. We'll see. I mean, uh, according to uh, Justin, um, he can ride the thing for a couple hours. He 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 kind of pitches himself as as a B motocross rider. He thinks that a pro rider at Glen Helen could squeak out a 30 minute moto. <laughs> BYD, what's up, Jared? Got to put that hat on and look cool. This is Jared, this is Backyard Designs uh, USA, he's head of marketing. Uh, he's also one of the Dirt Bike Magazine uh, test riders, so he comes out and helps the staff. Jared, are you gonna ride the electric bike today? Super stoked. <laughs> you like seeing Ron? I love Ron, he's my favorite. <laughs> Even more than Tilly? Yeah, I like, I don't know, that's kinda tough. That's a tough one. I really like Ron though. <laughs> So it all comes off just one. Yeah, but if you break it, it is separated. So this is one piece. This shroud. Oh, so is one you're piece. not you're not totally screwed. It. No, no, you just unbolt it, and then it separates here and here. So the whole rear fender and side plates are one piece, and then each bearing. Is one piece. But for maintenance purposes, if you did want to just take the whole thing off, the body work, and start, you know, whatever, swapping batteries, whatever, mm -hmm. you can do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super easy. These are just plastics, but everything will come uh, with a QR code. If you scan that, it'll bring you to an install video on YouTube where they'll show you to install and on and removal.
Why the hell are you riding dirt bike at 71? Because it's the funnest thing I've ever done in my whole life. We're gonna be bargain it today. Are you ready to go bargain? I'm ready to go bargain. I think it's a bargain. <laughs> oh. I'm good. Did you get a bargain on the bargain? I got a bargain on the bargain because uh, I didn't pay for it. Are you turned on? So you're on when it's flashing. Uh, it means that you're in neutral when you press, you'll also see the N here. When you press down, it'll put you into gear. So you're in map 45 horsepower. And then again, every time you go up, you'll gain another five. Okay, but I have to physically go back down. You have to physically go back down. If you don't like the engine braking, we can adjust that. But this is set to what everyone else of your ability has liked so far. Okay, so this is a special ed, special ability. Exactly. Setting. All right, perfect. Let's bargain. it. Yeah, got got another battery. We're ready to go. And on this one now we have it set up to where it's we were at the high 65 last time. Now 65 is our low map and we're going 65, 70, 75 and then max power. So, we're going to go do some uh some starts against the 450 and uh see what happens. You going to drag Tilly? Yeah. You going to drag on him? I'm going to drag on him. Start the higher gear. He's dragged, yeah. that's for sure. Where are you born? 93? 90. 90, he was already racing Supercross. No, not yet. Not 99? 90, 99. What yeah. year did you start racing Supercross? 2010. What were you doing then? Uh, getting married and having kids. And you were retired. I was already retired, but I rode the very first Supercross. <laughs> what do you think about that? 72, 1972. Well, was that considered the first Supercross? Because in 72, wasn't it still it was part a, of a Trans Am a series? That was the 72 one? Oh, okay. Because I just read something about that because I'm writing a story about it. It's called an Interam race. I thought that was... Which just, I think I got third or second or something I have no idea like what they're talking about. Is that the one that... Uh, Drag race. Uh, 2024 Husqvarna FC 450. Uh, Jared's on it and Tilly's on the Stark Bard. You definitely got him, huh? So that's, that's at 80. That's as fast as this thing will go. Like, as you can tell, the the fans running, all kinds of stuff. We've only done three passes, and it's gone from, I don't remember exactly what it is. It was in the 90s, and now it's at 85%. And 12 minutes of run time, or 12 minutes of it being on. I don't know how long you'd be able to go, like how long the battery would go at this level. And I don't know how long an average guy would be able to ride it at this level. Like that's kind of scary fast like that. Once it gets going and even about three quarters of the way coming down, like it was still starting to go faster. Like we had to put something there so we didn't go off the ledge, but it's, it's impressively fast like when it comes down to it. Now, whether that's a practical fast that you can actually run it on the track or not, I'm gonna find out a, bit, a little bit later. I'm gonna try to run a lap with that, but 80 is a lot. My guy over here hasn't raced Supercross or done a legit start in the better of 10 years. He wasn't looking too good. <laughs> <laughs> He's got 80 horsepower. <laughs> but, I was trying to help you with you haven't raced in a while, but you just screwed expect. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> on my side, I kind of look at it and go, it didn't do too bad because I could still yeah, I could lovely. still hear him and, and kind of feel him there, but... Feel him in you? I could feel him next to me. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> The uh, the compression braking is interesting, and then not having any kind of sound is really odd.
and not having not having to shift or anything is weird too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not like any gas-powered motorcycle I've ever ridden. Um, it's really not like any electric bike I've ever ridden either. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting day of testing. The er, first first uh, impression on the ergonomics is feels like an old school kind of KTM from back in the day, maybe ninety nine two thousand, um, but it's got a really round feel to it. from dirt bike i've got something a little different in my driveway today this is the brand new suzuki v-strom 800 de i know we're dirt bike guys in general we're not used to the word suzuki and brand new coming together but this is a little bit uh, a little bit different in the street bike world suzuki's still on top of their game we're kind of used to the dirt bikes going unchanged this is an all-new motorcycle i'm already discovering how much i like this bike for one thing it's super comfortable it fits me the uh the most interesting thing about this bike is that the seat height isn't that high. 
In fact, when I come to a stop, I can touch the ground with my heels, and that's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm not that tall. I think I used to be about six foot one. Uh, now I'm kind of shrinking down with with every uh, with every passing day. Well, naturally I'm who I am, so I'm gonna go straight to the dirt as fast as I can. Uh, first off, I didn't change the tires. These are the stock tires. They're mostly street oriented, so you can't, you can't get too crazy with these. Um, I've always thought it was a great idea to have two sets of wheels for any adventure bike. The guys at W are kind of into this now. They're all into adventure bikes, and they actually uh, have replacement wheels for most of the adventure bikes. I don't know if this is on the list yet, but we're going to talk to Kristen uh, as soon as we get back and find out, because I'd love to have another set of wheels with Continental TKC80s or something like that. Uh, these, uh, the stock tires, pretty much are going to go a long time. semi nobbies of course, aren't. So that's why you have to have two sets of wheels. Already though, I, I know I love this motor. This is more of a torquey motor, kind of a low-end motor. It's not that revy, like a, uh, a KTM 890 or even a Yamaha T7. Robbie, you got her all tuned up, huh? Yeah. You ready for round one? Ready for round one. Anything uh, special we got for the people watching? For the people watching, we got just kind of a few things. Our billet throttle housing, um, just in case the crash doesn't bend. We have a little, little, uh, but just a little added protection. Um, so just in case if it does crash, the massive cylinder doesn't break. We have a pretty bitchin' SXS skid plate on the bike for all the protection, um, Dunlop tires for all the grip, and I mean, we got a little bit of skateboard tape for out of grip too. I thought something pretty interesting, I've seen a few of the guys, they've gone back to two-stroke. Some of the guys, um, yeah, Cody Webb is back on the two-stroke, and Johnny Walker are defending champions on the two-stroke. Um, we'll be interested to see. So they're having fun on it, and but we're also here to race, so. Gets the job done. Good morning. This is uh, the opening round of uh, opening round of uh, the 2023 uh, enduro cross season, and look who we have, Mr. Oh, Cody Webb. Uh, you gotta hold that camera up for me here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're on the same page. Cody, uh, round one. Yeah, round one. Uh, it's awesome being back here in Everett. We haven't been here since. 2018 love this venue always a great crowd up here in the pacific northwest dirt's got a lot of moisture in it i think it'll slicken up all the obstacles and man it's just great to be back up here back on the two stroke again for the first time since 2015 so yeah it's gonna be an awesome weekend and cody the last time he was on a two stroke he did uh he won a championship so that's got to be exciting to be back on the two smoker and uh see if he can do it again yeah, definitely. Really excited to see where we end up with it. I think I won here in 2015 as well. So got my second ever win here. Um, like I said, the crowd's awesome. They'll be getting us pumped all night long and see where we see where we end up. Where are the kiddos? Where's the wife? Where is everyone? Oh man, kids are tough, dude. <laughs> it's expensive. My kid's over two now. I got to pay for his flight, and uh, we don't get paid enough doing this stuff. This is this is a passion project, you know. So 
Uh, they'll be at the next one though in Prescott. Um, so yeah, it'd be good to have the whole family there. But for this one, first round of the year, kind of want to be a little bit more stress free. So no family this time around, but you know, I'm looking forward to having them the next one. How old's your son? Three and a half years old. And then I got a five month old daughter at home too. So I'm in the thick of it right now. So the son, I know for a fact, uh, I'm 35 and the son's probably already taller than me. That's, <laughs> uh, that's no joke. I've seen photos and I've sized myself up and pretty sure he's already 5'8". Yeah, he's, he'll be pretty lanky. He is really lanky already. So he's already doing pivot turns on his strider. So we're working on what we can do out there and uh, you know, hoping he can uh, join the dual sport militia. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, look at the jeans. Like, this is so much body. You, you know it's bad <laughs> when your uh, waist is smaller than your like the waist to length ratio, 32, 34s. I know we talked about it yesterday, and there's I haven't I looked in the AMA rule book. There's nothing in it, but there's a rule book. Like yeah, there's a you've got to be over rule. a certain height. I think it's a minimum of five foot nine. Oh, ja Jamie Lanza, you would do that. You would okay. Oh, I you're see. five eight. Yeah, oh, dude, sorry you would about do. that. <laughs> yeah. Jamie Lanza, Ty Davis. I think they were. Oh yeah. But five. they were they were you know there's anomalies sometimes. Can you believe it? Where I'm still been? here, 17 years in the making, 34. Short story, uh, many years ago, I actually was filming at a water park where me and this guy right here uh, may or may not have gotten chased by the police, uh, filming a really bad video, but uh, it's good to see you, uh, Colt Naker, you're back. About 10 minutes into that water park, I don't know how you pull together an edit after <laughs> riding there for about 25 minutes, but somehow you still came out with a dirt bike magazine edit for us. Um, yeah, that was interesting. I got up at like three o'clock in the morning, drove out towards Vegas, pulled off the side, almost got impaled by some <laughs> sticks sticking out of the ground that were like jumping on top of the water park sign. And it was squirrely, but we made it happen. And uh, we're at round one of round Enduro one, Cross. Cross, yep. Back on the Husky. 2023, yeah. Um, yeah. I got the new bike. I uh, haven't, I mean, it's not new to most because, you know, um, that this model bike's been out for a year or so, right, um, on motocross. But, you know, off-road, we get stuff a little bit after the fact. They, they get to test stuff and work out the kinks and then they give it to us after. So, uh, first year on the new chassis, the new frame. And uh, for me, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. The last four years, that was a struggle for me on the old chassis. I was having a difficult time just Getting a bike to really do what I wanted to do. Um, I still managed to win three out of the four titles I raced on that bike, but it was difficult. I was struggling to get the bike to do what I wanted to do and go where I wanted to go. And I just felt a lot better first day. First day on the new bike, I felt better. Um, and I've had a good amount of time on it. So yeah, I'm excited. Do you have the option to ride a two stroke at all? Have you thought about that? For sure, yeah. They give me the option, whatever, I could ride. You know 501 probably if they if i want to <laughs> but uh but no the 350 is my bike of choice i've been on it for a solid um uh 2015 uh, the first year so eight eight uh eight years now so yeah i've been 350 guy i i like it i think it's a good bike of choice it kind of does it all it gets good starts it's got good torque um really smooth power but um yeah it has plenty of it when you need it but it's also nimble 
and uh, yeah, it's a good bike. And living in Idaho and uh, living the dream, got, yeah. the, got the family, that's awesome. Yeah, man, it's a big change. You know, five years ago I moved uh, full time to Idaho and um, you know, the goal was really, you know, I had my firstborn daughter and for me, I just wanted her to grow up in a different environment than, um, than I was in SoCal. Um, just, I wasn't from SoCal, you know, but I lived there for 12 years and I grew up in a small town in Central California and I wanted my kids to kind of grow up in a smaller town vibe and um, yeah, I like it up there. It's great. We got four seasons. About the only thing I don't love is snow. Uh, I still haven't really embraced it, but um, I get out uh, during the winter and go south and ride and, and do what I like to do. And round one, you uh, just like they say in the other styles of racing, you uh, you definitely can't win a title at round one, but you sure as hell can can yep. lose it. So yeah. just uh, some goals for you. Yeah, I mean, but the goal the goal is to win because you know that's what we're here to do. Always, every time we show up to any race, we're we're here to win. So um, that's what we train for. Anything less than that is is uh, is not really the goal. So, um, but at the end of the day, you know. Um, a lot of good guys out here, a lot of good competition. Um, track is tight and anything can happen in enduro cross. So you gotta try to keep it, keep it together, keep it on two wheels and uh, uh, stay out of the chaos, but embrace it at the same time. And for those of you that don't know, lastly, uh, Colton at one point was in between rides. This was years ago. Uh, we had him come out and ride all of our 250s. Some off-road guys say they can ride moto, eh, but Colton, is the real deal i can vouch for him this guy can ride a motocross track at uh, uh faster than a lot of my test riders currently i uh i always wanted to be a motocross supercross guy when i was growing up right but i think uh ultimately in the end i just loved riding dirt bikes so i got into trials um kind of took that on and went to the level of national pro in that but um i always came back to moto and wanted to to race in that as well and in the end i embraced it all right i mean 360s flips enduro cross hard enduro yeah, you were able to connect the dots straight, pretty straight rhythm like i don't know there's, there's not a lot i wouldn't be willing to do over the last 15 years racing wise so i kind of did it all about the only thing i didn't really get into is probably flat track but that's you know never really had the opportunity but or racing a 501 at enduro, enduro cross <laughs> yeah oh, 501 150 you with know. a horn yeah whatever it's all good um you know, they should have a class, they should have an adventure class up here. That'd be sick. The full adventure class, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, 790s. That'd be cool. You guys are so famous now. I remember you are just a young pup. What's up, you dude? a young pup? I am still a young pup. No, you I'm are, but now no, you're No, I could race vet now in a moto race. Now, but you're fat. I could go race vet. I, I almost did it. It's 25 plus now. Can you hang in moto, though? I don't know. Senior your pops ride question. moto. I know he can. I'll show up and do a motor race. I got Mohead now. We got full. He's gonna build me a full star I know, motor. You are. You're, you're pretty we'll much like. We'll build a full star motor in a Sherco. I'm thinking an outdoor <laughs> national for this guy. Can we? I don't think we can do an outdoor. Why not? Oh, from yeah, obligation. Just, well, we just we have to pay three thousand dollars. Yeah. To do it, so. No, you have to sell like what is that? Like five hundred. Uh, they changed it to four hundred units of that displacement. Sixty nine bikes. Sixty nine. Six you have to do sixty nine bikes. Sixty nine. Let's go with Sherco. racers in the world and they're all hanging yeah, out together. Well, I still think it's super, it's like super short, come on. Over this, right there. Yeah. Right around. Right.
factory beta, and this man gets Ooh. his hands dirty, dude. Changing oh, tires. Look, look, at this guy. look at this guy. No I in team. Defending champ, and he is working on tires right now. The world of off road. This ain't no supercross, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're mentioning that. Imagine Jetson freaking changing his tire. <laughs> Dude, are you doing this stuff right? Hopefully. You know what you're doing? No, I don't. I, I, wing it. I wing it a little bit. Really. Track's gnarly, huh? It's... It's like dirt is gnarly. It's jumpy. It's jumpy, but... Like, still very techy at the same time. Hey! <laughs> Stuff for the wrinkles, damn old. Dirt Bike Magazine wrap up. Thank you guys for watching. Just a little behind the scenes of uh, who we are, what we do on a daily basis, and just uh, some different stuff, some personalities. Uh, myself, Travis Fant, Ron Lawson, and uh, Mark Tilly, and just kind of what we do each week to uh, put this whole program together. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you uh, like this video, if we should do more, or we should just cut it out right now uh, while we've only done one. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, before you uh, bail out of here.